Hello and welcome. My name is Joseph and I'm co-founder at Setter.ai. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can programmatically schedule Calendly events via API. To give you some background, if you go to the official API reference of Calendly, there are already various use cases and endpoints that are supported by Calendly. You can, for instance, fetch data about the event types of a user. For scheduled events, you can, for instance, cancel events or create whole new scheduling links. But seemingly the only thing you can't do is programmatically schedule events via Calendly. There is no endpoint for that, unfortunately. Why? If you want to use Calendly as your single source of truth for your scheduling solution and want to integrate it with other tools, for instance, via Zapier, this is not possible with the official API. And on top of that, if you go to Stack Overflow, you'll find this public thread about scheduling Calendly events, which has been answered in 2020 by an official Calendly employee stating that, quote, probably there won't be an endpoint for a while. If you want to still schedule Calendly events programmatically, then you can use a third party solution from Setter.ai. Just head to trysetter.com, link in the description. And on that page, if you click on get started, you can choose one of the two available subscriptions for getting API access to an endpoint. One of them is the standard event type subscription where you can book unlimited events to a standard event type. The other one is for so-called round robin event types. So if you have like a team that is set up with Calendly and assigning events on a round robin schedule basis, then this is the plan to go with. Purchase a subscription and you will receive an API key that you can use to schedule events programmatically. I've already prepared a Calendly event type that we're going to use to show you how you can do it yourself. In the progress of this video, we're going to set up all of the instructions for scheduling to a event type with existing custom form fields of all different types. It doesn't matter if there's checkboxes, radio buttons, or text fields of whatever sort. Let's head to the documentation of the API endpoint. In this documentation page, we are actually able to try the API right from the browser. I won't show you any code here. I will just fill in these fields, but you're probably going to use some form of programming language or automation to schedule. Feel free to take inspiration from the examples provided on the right. As I've mentioned before, we're going to need an API key. Let me quickly copy this over. Then we can fill the body of the request. First, we're going to fill all of the custom form fields that are going to be on the form. And this is an array of fields. Let's create a field and have a look at the form. It's very important to get this right. Otherwise, scheduling won't work properly. For every field, it's key that you copy the label of the field one-to-one -one without any typo and also the value you want to enter to that field. If that value is a preset value, like in this dropdown, then it's very important that you match exactly the string that is in here. Again, otherwise this won't work. Let's start with a name. By the way, it's possible to configure another approach where you collect first name and last name instead of just one name field. In this case, same principle applies. You just create a field for each copying the exact labels. Let's enter the name of the field, which in this case is uh, also name. The type, these are the five types of custom form fields that Calendly supports. This is not a text. Text is for large text fields, multi-line text fields. 
but instead a string with single line fields. Let's enter my name and a new item for the next field, which is the email field. of type string, just like the name. And let's enter my email address. Okay, that's another single line field with a rather longer question. Again, let's copy this exactly as it is of type string again. And let's say we found you via Google. Please share more about your use case. And this is actually the first uh, different kind of field, a multi-line field. So we're going to specify text with a value of I want to schedule events to Calendly. And again, feel free to enter whatever value you have within your code in whatever programming language you're doing this. So whatever variables you want to use and forward to this endpoint. Okay, now we have a radio buttons field which is a single choice selection. So let's select the single select here. And what value do we give it? Let's say a phone. Which weekdays work best for you? Here we can select multiple fields. So this is of type multi-select. Let's say we're selecting Wednesday. And here we have a drop down, which like the radio button field is a single select. This is a single select and enter 10 to 100, exactly as it is in there. And last field is a new field, the phone number field, that's very important. You can uh, recognize this here with this little country code indicator. And let's enter a valid phone number, very important again, to format this uh, correctly, just as Calendly expects. I recommend adding the country code indicator of plus. If you want to do this in your code programmatically, that's totally fine. Okay. So far so good for the fields object in the body. As a side note, Calendly supports various languages. This form is uh, set to English right now, but if you, for instance, want to use a German, French, Spanish, or whatever form, then again, you have to copy the exact values as they are stated here um, to the fields. So in French here, it would say nom. So you would copy exactly this. Otherwise, the request will fail. Now let's enter the actual scheduling URL. Calendly gives you this uh, typical URL in this given format where you usually have your organization identifier or user account identifier and the event type slug in the end. You can simply go ahead and copy this from here you can see just until before this date string. So where the event type 
in this case it's called 60 minutes ends. That's very important. Do not leave out any part here, not the event type, not the uh, slug before that, whatever. And also don't add the date. Otherwise, this is not formatted properly and you will get an error code. Then we're going to enter the start time. And this, in typical coding manner, is a ISO timestamp. You can uh, see how you should format it in the documentation. We can conveniently, since we have this open, just copy this string here. And again, it's essential to follow the exact format as specified here. So for instance, you can pass this UTC string in UTC time zone with a Z in the end, or a time zone with a time zone offset like here, but do not include, which sometimes happens in certain encodings, do not include the milliseconds to the string. So not these uh, few characters here, do it exactly as it is in here. Next field is called invitee time zone. This is an optional field. By default, it will just select UTC time zone and this is what you will see displayed within the Calendly invite. So whenever a user, for instance, from Eastern Standard Time US books Calendly with you, they will probably go ahead and select the corresponding time zone here. And Calendly stores this information and passes it on to you so you know the time zone of your invitees. So if you want to uh, keep track of that as well, you can just pass this optional invitee time zone programmatically if that's relevant to you, but this is not necessary. Let's set this to America, Chicago. And side note, this should be passed in the so-called IANA format like this, America, Chicago, America, New York. Last field is the, again, optional webhook URL field, but I really strongly recommend you to use this field because with this URL, you can basically receive a result webhook after the booking has completed or not completed if it has errored for any reason. So as soon as I'm going to schedule this and send the request, we're going to receive a 200 HTTP status code if everything went fine. But this does not mean that the event is actually going to be booked. So if you want to know that an event is actually booked, please pass some webhook URL here that you can receive. And it will state whether the request and the whole scheduling succeeded or not and whether you want to retry the whole thing. A reason for why the request could fail could be, for instance, that the start time provided is not actually available, maybe not anymore or at all. And in this case, you want to make sure that the start time you're passing is something you've verified beforehand. As I've mentioned in the beginning of the video, you can just go ahead and I recommend you to do this and fetch a user's availability schedule. This will return you available times from your Calendly event types. So you can be assured that the start time passed is actually available. Let's pass an example webhook just to demonstrate. And we're ready to go. We press send and we receive a 200 status code of OK. So our request was formatted properly. The request was received. But again, we cannot be sure that this is actually going through. We will know once we receive the webhook we specified. 
this should arrive in a matter of one to two minutes latest. And here we go, there's the webhook. You can see in the webhook that the fields we entered initially are also sent again in the response so you can reference them and associate them with your initial request. As you can see, it didn't error, error is null. If it had errored, then there would be some kind of error to be seen here. Now that the request was completed, you eventually receive your Calendly invite as you can see here in my email inbox with the data we provided initially through the API. And that's it. I hope you find this video helpful and hope that you're gonna schedule a lot of events. Thanks for watching.